Hey guys, it's me again. Today, we will be discussing foods first created in Philadelphia. There are so many foods that were first made in Philly. Some of them we all know, like the cheesesteak, but others you might have never guessed. These foods have helped shape our culture in Philadelphia and our culture in the United States. The first food I like to talk about is cheesesteaks. Cheesesteaks are basically the staple food of Philadelphia. If you don't know what they are, cheesesteaks are sandwiches on a long roll filled with thin chopped steak and cheese on top. Pat Olivieri owned a hot dog cart in 1930, and one day he decided to put some beef from his butcher on the grill. Cheesesteaks were originally steak sandwiches because they did not come with cheese on it, just steak on a roll. After the steak became successful, Pat opened up his store on Ninth and Pat's Young called Pat's King of Steaks. Soon later, Gino's opened up right across the street selling steaks, but Gino's founder Joe Vento claims that he was actually the first one to put cheese on the steaks, not Livieri. Now, there are many places to get cheese steaks all around the city, but Gino's and Pat's are still going strong and are still rivals. Okay, so the next food is the Philadelphia soft pretzel. Philadelphia soft pretzels have a figure eight shape and are hard and crunchy on the outside, but like bread in the inside. The first pretzel itself was not created in Philadelphia, but the soft pretzel was. Ambrose Roth acquired the pretzel recipe from a hobo who gave it as thanks for a hot meal of hospitality. Then Roth gave the recipe to his apprentice, Julius Sturgis. Sturgis created the first soft pretzel factory in Lidditz, PA. Pretzels quickly became a city food. Okay, so next we have the hoagie. A hoagie is a sandwich on a long roll that is made to order with meats, cheeses, tomatoes, onions, lettuce, oil, mayo, seasonings, and sometimes peppers. Historians cannot seem to agree on the correct story of how the hoagie came to be but they can agree that it was created in the Philadelphia area. In other cities, the same sandwich might be called many different names, like a submarine sandwich, a grinder, or a hero. This next thing isn't really a food. It's something you chew, but don't swallow. It's bubblegum! Yes, bubblegum was created in Philadelphia. I myself did not know this before I started this project. Walter Dimer first created bubble gum. He worked as an accountant for Fleer Chewing Gum Company in Philadelphia. In his spare time, he would create new gum recipes. One recipe he made was less sticky and more stretchy than regular chewing gum. This would later become bubble gum. In his first year of selling the bubble gum, he made $1,500,000. This next item is not a food either, but a drink. Yes, root beer was created in Philadelphia, and also the root beer float. Root beer was created by a man named Charles Harris. He was a pharmacist and made a recipe for herbal tea while on his honeymoon. He began to sell the tea dry while he worked on a liquid version. He used carbonated soda water as the liquid. It was first introduced to the public at the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition. Now... The root beer float was created by Robert McKay Green. One day at his root beer stand, he ran out of cream, so he decided to use ice cream instead. Now, root beer floats are very popular all around the United States with children and adults. Another food first made in Philadelphia is a stromboli. A stromboli is basically a a stromboli is basically a pizza folded into a rectangular shape with the toppings in the inside. Strombolis can have many different fillings and is not limited to just one. There is even a cheesesteak stromboli. Another food that was also created in Philadelphia is Irish potato candies. Irish potato candies are, are coconut cream balls covered with cinnamon. These candies are very popular around St. Patrick's Day. They are as much a part of St. Patrick's Day as Mincy Green milkshakes. They've been around for almost 200 years. They are said to be created by immigrants from Ireland who sold them to make money. Last, and definitely least in my opinion, is Scrapple. 
It is called Scrapple because it uses the scraps of the pigs. Some of the ingredients include pork stock, pork, pork skins, cornmeal, wheat flour, pork hearts, pork liver, pork tongues, salt, and spices. Now you see why this is least in my opinion. Even though I'm not sure how it was made, I know it was created in Philadelphia. Many people used to make Scrapple when they didn't want to waste any parts of the pig and wanted to eat it all, or at least use all of it. For my last part of the podcast, I interviewed several of my classmates and asked them about their favorite Philly foods. First, I asked Anne, where was her favorite place to get cheese sticks? And she responded, my favorite place to get cheese sticks is Phillips or Gino's. I also asked her, did she like root beer floats? And she responded, yes. Also, Mia's favorite place to get cheese sticks is Phillips, and she also likes root beer floats. Also, Autumn's favorite place to get cheese sticks is Max's, and she also likes root beer floats. Lastly, I think Gino's is the best place to get cheese sticks, and I also love root beer floats. Well, guys, this is the end of my podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye.